Have you ever wondered how expensive it would be to own a piece of comic book history? I think all collectors own a little piece in their own right. It all depends on the, the value, but it's special to them, and Spider-Man is right up there. Debuted in 1962, instant hit with readers, quickly became one of the most recognizable superheroes of all time, and has since appeared in just everything. Comic franchises, TV shows, big budget movies, everything. Peter Parker's comic history is lengthy and rich, and today we are going to go over some insane price tags that I've either seen on individual comic books, and today we are going to look at some insane price tags on individual Spider-Man comic books. Welcome to Chaos Comics, everybody. We are going to go over the most expensive Spider-Man comics of all time. Make sure you guys drop a like, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and uh, I want you to place your bets now on what these prices are are going to look like in a year, in two years, when they actually announce Spider-Man 4. Let's kick it off at number 10 with The Amazing Spider-Man number 50 from 1967. This has to be one of the most iconic covers in comic book history. If you've never opened a Spider-Man comic in your life, you've probably seen the Spider-Man No More artwork. The arc was a big deal when it first came out and since has been redone and reimagined a number of times, most notably in the movie Spider-Man 2. This issue was also the very first appearance of Wilson Fisk, also known as Kingpin, who would become one of Spidey's most formidable foes. Now, original prints of The Amazing Spider-Man 50 are currently going for roughly $400 for a poor condition copy, while a higher quality copy, it'll probably run you around $4,000. The issue once sold for an even fifty grand and features some of the most famous Spider-Man imagery in the character's history, most notably the shot of Peter walking away from his Spidey suit in a garbage can. Now, maybe at number 10, but it's a piece of comic book history, and probably always will be. At number 9 is Amazing Spider-Man number 13 from 1964, the iconic first appearance of Mysterio. Amazing Spider-Man issue 13 started experimenting with Peter Parker's villains and really put his intellect to the test. Now today, we all know who Mysterio is, but he was basically a giant question mark when he originally appeared, and this cover is one of my favorites. A poor quality copy of issue 13 tends to go for around $600 to $700. A mid condition will probably run you around $2,000. Sorry. And the most expensive recorded sale of this issue clocked in at $94,000. But comic book historians currently value it at an even 50K, which kind of makes it technically a tie for 10th place. But I put it at number nine because of the higher price of the lower quality copies. At number eight today. The Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number 1 from 1964, The Sinister Six. Perhaps the most famous villain team up in comic book history? I don't know. The original lineup of the six contained Kraven the Hunter, the Vulture, Mysterio, Sandman, Electro, and yes, Doc Ock. It all started here with the first issue of The Amazing Spider-Man Annual. It also contains some very rare character profiles and breakdowns of how Spidey's gadgets actually worked. It added to the character's lore. It solidified his history while also reaffirming just how smart Peter was. Now, depending on the source and the copy's quality, this comic can run you anywhere from $500 to over $6,000. The highest recorded sale of the comic book has clocked in at $165,000, which it shouldn't be too shocking considering just how popular the Sinister Six are, especially after No Way Home, all that, all that. That lineup was a tad different from the original. There has been many different lineups for the Sinister Six, but still a great book. At number seven today, The Amazing Spider-Man number five from 1963. Now, if you know your Spider-Man history, you know he shares a lot of story arcs with the Fantastic Four. In fact, one of the very first issues of Spidey's standalone series had him facing off with none other than Doctor Doom. Now, Doom showed up in the issue five of The Amazing Spider-Man, and it marked the first time that Spidey faced off with somebody else's villain, but... It also displayed just how powerful Spidey could be. He held his own pretty well in battle. Cheap copies of issue 5 can run you from the high hundreds for a poorly maintained copy and the low thousands for an average one. But if you're looking for a well-preserved copy, get ready to shell out 7000 for it. In fact, a mint condition copy could run you a little over $100,000. You heard me right, six figures. Dr. Doom doesn't mess around, especially when it comes to comic prices. At number 6 today, The Amazing Spider-Man number 3 from 1963. Now, Doc Ock is probably the single most iconic villain in the Spider-Man's lineup. It could be debated. You let me know in the comment section. It's debatable whether he's Spidey's arch nemesis or not, but he's definitely a fan favorite, largely thanks to his intimidating brain and his portrayal in Spider-Man 2 by Alfred Molina that helped introduce the character to a wider audience. The villain? He first appeared in issue three of The Amazing Spider-Man. If you're looking to lock down a copy of that here in 2022, 
you should probably expect to pay at least $3,000 for a relatively low quality one. Now, if you're looking for something in higher condition, you might want to be prepared to cough up to almost, are you ready, $300,000. Yep, so why is it down at number six? Well, aside from a few instances, most copies of the issue go for around 3,000, but the fact that it has been sold up to 270,000 is insane. The price varies pretty wildly for Doc Ock's first appearance. At number five today, The Amazing Spider-Man number six from 1963. Now, when you think of Spider-Man villains, there's a good chance a lizard is probably one that comes into your mind uh, up front. Dr. Kirk Connors was trying to repair his lost limb, but he accidentally turned himself into this monstrous green creature that Peter had to take down before he got out of control in this story. That's where it all started, issue number six. The lizard looked pretty different back then, but the issue story holds up extremely well in the pivotal Spidey canon. Now looking across the internet, a decent quality copy of ASM number six will run you anywhere from 7,000 to 15,000. You need to keep in mind, we're just at number five here, and you're about to see a huge spike in prices for the rest of the video. At number four today is The Amazing Spider-Man number 14 from 1964. This issue was basically the showdown of the green people. So issue number 14 was the first time Spidey faced off against the iconic Green Goblin, but it was also the first time Peter went head-to-head -head with the Incredible Hulk, who would end up becoming an ongoing rival for the wall crawler. Now, you can find a poor condition about, I'd say around 1100 mint condition copies, they get they get really, really expensive. You should expect to pay anywhere from 11000 to 130000 depending on the condition and gray. Now, over time, this issue has gotten more and more valuable thanks to the rising popularity of the Hulk and Green Goblin in the movies. It's pretty insane to think about how much the comic world has changed since 1964. Marvel had no idea. Somebody uh, was like Gobby was just going to catch on the way he did, but man, did he. At number three, Amazing Spider-Man number four... 1963. Released in September of 63, issue number four of Spider-Man's original series introduced the world to the iconic Sandman. Now, Spidey is known for his fantastic rogue galleries, and Sandman is one of the most powerful of all of them. ASM 4 also featured the first appearance of Betty Brant, and it was also the very first time Peter called himself the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, which would quickly become one of his most popular nicknames. Copies of this comic can run you anywhere from $11,000 to over $200,000. Some comic historians estimate the value is closer to 1.3 million right now, thanks to the Sandman's rise in popularity, but no matter what you think is correct, issue number four is still one of the most expensive additions to any comic collection. At number two today, The Amazing Spider-Man number one, 1963. Marvel was very quick to give Peter Parker his own franchise after his popular first appearance in the Amazing Fantasy series. The ASM debuted in 1963, the first issue, was an insane crossover. It featured appearances from the Fantastic Four and forever associating the wall crawler with the likes of Reed Richards and the Human Torch. This comic also had the first appearance of the Chameleon, who would become one of the most iconic Spidey villains of all time as well. Mint condition copies of ASM number one have gone for over $1.4 million. If you're in the market right now for a copy, you're probably going to pay anywhere between 80k and 100k for average quality. That's insane. I know it's it's a it's a book. It's a it's a piece of paper. But believe it or not. This isn't even close to the most expensive Spidey comic of all time. No shocker at number one, if you collect comics, you already know the Holy Grail. Amazing Fantasy 15, 1962. Now, as is the usual situation with comic book characters, their most valuable issue is their very first one, and in 2022, uh, Amazing Fantasy 15 is still by far the most expensive Spidey comic on the market. It's an anthology series that ran in the early 1960s, basically as a giant prototype for a bunch of character uh, archetypes and story ideas. Issue number 15 dropped in 1962 and introduced the world to Peter Parker, who was an orphan New York teenager granted Spidey powers after being bitten by a radioactive specimen. Now the character? Smash hit. He quickly got his own series, but this original appearance is one of the most sought after comics of all time. In 2022, a mint condition copy of Amazing Fantasy 15 can run you close to 700,000, and the lowest price I could find was still a whopping 30,000. In 2021, a, cap a copy actually went for $3.6 million, making this by far the most highly valued Spider Man comic of all time. So, my question to you guys is. Do you own any of these? I am lucky enough to own Amazing Spider-Man 2, which didn't even make this list, which is kind of crazy to me, but I guess it is what it is, and I would love to own some more. Have you ever owned an Amazing Fantasy 15? Have you ever seen one in real life? Let me know, guys. I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you soon.